Hello and welcome to the National Instruments MIDAC tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be looking at how to build a simple graphic audio equalizer using National Instruments LabVIEW and the MIDAC platform. This tutorial will be broken down into three major steps. Data acquisition, the producer consumer design pattern and finally some basic signal analysis. So let's start by opening up LabVIEW. You can find this by navigating to the start menu, selecting all programs, National Instruments and LabVIEW. So let's start by creating a blank VI. You can do this through the splash screen, which is the orange window presented in front of you. Simply click blank VI. Immediately, you'll notice that two windows appear in front of you, a white window and a gray window. The white window is the block diagram where we do our coding, and the gray window is the front panel where we build our user interface. So let's have a look at doing some data acquisition in LabVIEW. We can do this using an express function called the DAC Assistant. We can access the DAC Assistant by right-clicking the block diagram to open up the Functions menu. In the Functions menu, if we navigate down to the Express tab, select Input, and then select DAC Assistant. Then, click on the block diagram to place the DAC Assistant down. Once we place the DAC Assistant on the block diagram, we can then begin to configure the function to either acquire or generate signals. In this instance, we want to acquire voltage. Once this is done, LabVIEW will determine which data acquisition devices are in your system, allow you to select the particular device and the number of channels you would like. From there we're presented with a final configuration screen where we are able to determine the maximum and minimum voltages that are being recorded by the data acquisition device and also the mode at which it records, finite, continuous or a set number of samples. In this instance I'm going to set the maximum and minimum voltages to plus and minus two volts and the acquisition mode to continuous. I will then select OK and LabVIEW will begin to build the function for you. Once this is done, the final step is to drop a while loop around our DAC assistant as we want it to remain continuously acquiring data. So let's have a look at building that producer consumer design pattern I mentioned earlier. What this consists of is a couple of loops and some functions which allow us to build up a queue of data in LabVIEW. We can access the functions that allow us to build queues through the Functions menu. We're going under Programming, Synchronization, and Queues. The basic design pattern consists of four queue functions. A Create queue, an End queue element, a dequeue element, and a Release queue. It also has two loops. A primary loop, known as the producer, and a secondary loop, known as the consumer. So let's watch how I just wire these up. Now that's all nice and neatly wired up, we can determine what type of data we're going to be putting into our queue. In our producer loop, we've placed the DAC assistant. Now the output of the DAC assistant is what we call dynamic data type, meaning it can hold a wide variety of different data types. In this instance, we're going to want to hold an array of data, which corresponds to the data that we're going to be collecting and our audio input. On the left hand side of our create queue function, there's a data type input. Here we can designate the data type that's going to be held in our queue. Watch as I go about creating a dynamic data type input for our create queue function. The reason why we use the producer consumer design pattern is to ensure that our acquisition happens uninterrupted and any free processor cycles are actually used by our consumer loop, the lower loop, to do any signal processing. Finally, let's wire our DAC assistant into our queue and finish this up. So let's have a look at some signal processing in LabVIEW. In this instance, I'll be using three filters to separate the base, mid, and treble ranges out of my audio signal. To place down a filter, we access the functions palette by right clicking the block diagram, go to express, signal analysis, and filter. We then place this down onto the block diagram and are presented with a configuration screen. In the screen, we can choose to configure the filter type as well as the past and stop bands in the filter.
I will now repeat this process three times, choosing different frequency bands for each filter, allowing me to separate the bass, mid and treble ranges from my audio signal. I will now place a multiplication function on the output of each filter. This will allow me to amplify the individual bands of frequency I have chosen. Finally, I'll just add the signals together to recombine them. Now that I've added my signals together, I can output them using a DAC assistant. However, this time, rather than choosing a choir signal, I'll choose generate signal and follow the same procedures I did last time to configure that particular function. There you go, we now have a working graphic audio equalizer. Thank you for listening to my video. You can find similar videos and tutorials on our website at www.ni.com.